Hello and welcome to another edition of Luminar Coffee Break. I'm your host, Vanelli. Now, our topic today is how to colorize an image to add style to it. And we're going to use the, the toning tool to accomplish this. All right? Well, hey, let's just dive right in. So, here we are. Now, before I do that, <clears throat> if you have any questions whatsoever, please leave them in the comments below. Um, and what we'll try to do, especially during the show, is we'll try to answer them as best that we can. And if we don't answer them during the show, we'll try to get to them afterwards. All right? So, let's start. Here's the original. And this is what we're going to convert it to. Notice we're not going, going way overboard, which we can, and I'll show you how to do that. We just want to add just a really cool tone. Imagine this is an entire series of images, let's say five or ten of them, and we want all of them to look and feel the same. It could be for, for a wedding, it could be for a family outing, whatever it is, we want to make sure that all of these look the same. All right? So, let's start from the beginning. So with the history tool, I'm going to come all the way to the bottom. So this was the original image. That's what we're going to start with. We're going to start with cropping it first. So let's come over here to composition, uh, AI, and I'm going to change the orientation. Bring it in just a little bit. Notice I'm let, trying to set it, set it up um, with the rule of thirds. Let's get a little bit more here. That looks good. And enter to commit to change. Now we have it set. All right. Now once I have it formed the way I want, I'm just go to templates, and I know which one I want to use. So I'm going to come to my favorites and just click clean light. Now keep this in mind. Look, look at that. Th these are changes I was already going to do. So why not use a template? And use the power of AI to let it help you, you know, get started. So if you look over here to edit, and I'm, I'm showing you these only because what if you don't have access to clean light in the future? Or if you want to know exactly what it did, well, if you look, it, it, it worked on enhance, color, structure, and light. Well, from here, I'm going to bump up some of the X and AI. And while I'm here, I'm going to bump up the sky enhancer just a little bit. So before and after it already is looking good. Add a little more structure. And the color is fine. Um, I like how it desaturates it just a little bit, but I want to bump up the vibrancy just a touch. All right. So now that I have that set, let's come down to toning. Now, here's where what we want to do with toning is we want to adjust the shadows and the highlights independently. All right? So this is almost like split toning. So what I want to do is I'll start with the shadows, and here's where we have to make a creative decision. Most shadows have like a bluish tint to it, so I can continue with a bluish tint, or I can add more of a goldish tone to it. So this is where we're going to start to experiment. All right, I'm going to bump up the saturation, and just to show you the difference, look at the difference between adding purples in the shadows, blue tones, and of course the golden tones. Let's come over here, I'm going to add more purple tones. Now for highlights, again, let's increase it. Typically the highlights will have more of a golden tone, you know, emulating the sun. But notice I can change it up a bit, add more blues in the highlights, and this again is entirely up to you. Um, I, I'm actually kind of liking this here. There we go, look at that. All right, so here we are before and after. Again, notice it wasn't anything dramatic. It wasn't 
like we completely altered the image. If somebody looks at this, they can easily say, wow, did that come straight out of the camera? Because we want to make it so subtle, but we want to make it look um, unique or style it, all right? So now that I have that set, before, before we go back to make any drastic changes, here, let's work with the vignette tool. I want to draw more attention to her. Here we are. And feather. There we go. Look how that draws attention to her. Good. And there we go. All right, so Julie is asking a good question. She said, is this going to affect the skin tones too? Let's look. Here's before and after. So, Julie, yes, it's, it's going to add a tone to it, but because the way we're doing it, it's matching the environment, so it looks fine. Otherwise, yeah, if it were just, if we, if we took the, let's go back down here for toning. If we were to mask it, erase, this is where you can make a decision. I want to put that at 100%. You can make a decision. Do you want it to affect the skin tones or not? This is what it looks like without it. Without it affecting the skin tone. So you can't go back and erase it if you don't like the effect on the skin tone. You're able to go back to it. That's entirely up to you. But just keep in mind, if you get to the one image... You'll do it to all 20 or whatever the series that you're looking at. I personally didn't mind the skin tone being affected. Let's see if I can come in. And that's, that's showing you the mask. I want to clear it. There we go. And now the mask is in there. So I don't have a problem with it, but that's entirely up to you. But that gives you a good... Um, that that gives you a good example on how you can get rid of that if if it bothers you. All right. All right. So we have that. One other thing I may want to do is I'm looking at the bottom rocks. If it bothers you, that's a little bit bright. I can come over here to um, the the mask the local masking tool, and I want to underexpose the, the entire image. So globally, I'm looking just at the rocks. I'll underexpose it to here. Maybe dial down some of the saturation. And again, I'm just looking at this area here. Now, I can either paint in the effect, or I can use a gradient mask, and then just draw up like this. There we go. And that just got rid of the bottom. I mean, the bottom less predominant than the top. All right? Let me check what, one moment. All right, so if you mask out the face, would the mask select face in the other images? No. All right, so that's a good question, Pat. So that, that's why I said if you do masking, and remember this, the, the whole purpose behind Luminar is to get in quick, make creative edits, make it look awesome, fast. The moment we start using masking, now that's a creative, or you would look at that as like a one-off. Or you look at that as a specialty item that you really want to spend extra time on for that image. And that's great. That gives you the option for it. If I were to do these for an entire series of images, and let's say they were just for me, um, a bunch of us go out, and we do this really killer photo shoot, that's when I would not mask the face. If it were for a competition or if this were for a paying client that wants all of them masked out, then obviously you would do that. But in general, it look, if it looks really good the way it is, keep it. If not, that's when you go back through and you do the masking. But remember, once you do the masking, it doesn't follow through with all the other images because it doesn't know where the faces are when it goes on to the next images. All right? Or even if, let's say we didn't use face, let's say the rocks in the bottom. It doesn't know that, oh, you wanted to take these rocks and make them duller, but
but let leave the other ones the way they are. All right? So back to it. Awesome. So now that we have that set, we have a few minutes. Let's come back and let's just experiment now. So I'm going to come back to my toning tool. Now, and, and I said this earlier, we could go to extremes. Oh, and by the way, if you notice on the bottom, it gives you a chance to balance out the highlights and the shadows. So if, let's go to an extreme. One moment. I want to clear it. There we go. And I want to start again. That's it. Let's see. I want to go to an extreme for this one. And for the shadows. Let's go here. Good. So before and after. And again, I went to an extreme just because I want to show you what we're dealing with here. So on the bottom, you could balance out the shadows and the highlights, and that's entirely up to you. So again, if you want one to be more predominant than the other, the shadows or the highlights, this is where you can come in and make your adjustments. Let's see here. And again, there we go, right about there. All right. Awesome. All right, just checking out. <laughs> yes, Pat. So Pat says it makes sense unless AI is not nice tight. Um, awesome. I'm should be checking some of these. Good. Um, I'm trying to use that with one red. So, oh, perfect. All right, awesome, awesome. Good. So you so you're seeing the difference on a repair. A repair versus, versus a creative edit. Sometimes you have to repair an image, and that's where you'll take extra time, and you're going through the masking or the gradient. Enhancement is what we're doing right now, because we already have a really good image we like to work with, and now we just want to make it look even better. All right? So there we have it. So that's how we work with the toning tool. When you work with it, again, apply the amount, change your saturation, Adjust the U, balance it out. Once you get it looking the way you like it, then go back, let me show you again, then go back to the balance tool or the balance slider and then just balance it out to where it, to where it looks good for you. And don't forget to turn it on and off each time just to give you a feel of what the tool is actually doing. All right? Well, guys, hey, Thank you so much for joining me. If you like these episodes, please make sure you give us a thumbs up. Our producers like seeing those, those uh, thumbs up. And then on Friday, we're going to revisit um, this tutorial along with what we did earlier in the week. And then Angela will show you some of her um, tutorials that she did on the opposite days. All right? So we'll see you at the next Coffee Break.